to be captured. Um, just keep your um, video off and then I'll be pretty good. Um, just want to also um, do a bit of a contribution um, to the ebook um, for ABCD practitioners. Um, um, if you have a desire to tell, share, and tell stories about different ways of connecting in community, um, please, for sure, please um, um, definitely um, contribute. Um, and the recordings from this year's um, um, on conference um, session will be part of the collection as well. So you can submit a story. Um, at the following link provided, um, just please reach out for sure. Um, like I said, please mute until we start. Um, and yeah, any troubleshooting um, issues, um, please, like I said, mention just reach out to either Joel and I, and I will turn back to, to Joel. Well, Janelle, sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Janelle from Phoenix Youth Programs. Um, I'm going to start us off by explaining a bit about how the four of us um, came to become a group. So we're all part of the Nova Scotia Youth Focus Community of Practice. Um, it's specifically for um, career practitioners or people who work in employment um, and often education in uh, working with youth. So whatever age group, um, the different organizations deem that to be. Um, so the idea for us working together came from a call out from um, Joel and Templeton, who are facilitators of that community of practice. Um, and I reached out with an idea um, that I was very passionate about. Um, and then Joel and Templeton reached out to Maggie from uh, Teamwork um, to co-present with me and to provide a little bit more context to the idea um, and the research that I had done on that topic, um, which was disclosing mental illness in the workplace. So it came to be a collaboration between the three agencies. Um, we did one workshop within the community of practice, and then it grew to be more than that, um, as we had such a positive response from that initial workshop, and people were hungry for more knowledge around the topic. So um, Joel's going to tell a bit more about how that came to evolve to uh, beyond the community of practice. Thanks, Janelle. Yeah, so the idea were we had such a positive response with um, the, uh, the, the, the presentation that Janelle and Maggie did that we actually uh, reached out and de developed and designed to do two webinars that were outside of the community of practice. And so that's really, uh, uh, Janelle's gonna explain a little bit more about what we're hoping for out of this out of this uh, presentation, but that's really the ideas. I think for many of us, uh, we may have been, we may be involved with the communities of practice or communities of learning. We may facilitate communities of practice or communities of learning, but what can happen is that, that learning, the great, I would say the word juicy learnings that can happen in those spaces um, can sometimes become insulated. And so uh, what happened, this was a, the, it, what happened in our collaboration and our working together was the ability to offer two external workshops to audience outside of the community practice, which were, were, were really highly attended and we had differing target audiences for those pieces. And so um, that's, that's, that's kind of the context of which this presentation was, it grew out of. Mm. So thank you, Joel. So our hope for today is that, um, you know, we do believe that communities of learning are valuable and that the learning shouldn't stop there. So we hope that you come away with some practical suggestions on how you can build on assets in your own community, whether or not it's a formal community of learning and expand that knowledge uh, to a broader range of people. So since we're all about uh, engaging folks, we want to ask a question. And so um, recognizing the time and wanting to be respectful of that, uh, we would love to hear if you could put it in the chat or if somebody, if there are a few folks who wanted to unmute and share a little bit about what your experiences with been within communities of learning, communities of practice, um, and any experiences you might have had idea around this idea of sharing knowledge outside of that space or that community. So. Um, feel free to unmute if you had a, an experience or a story about that, or if you wanted to throw something in the chat, um, that would be lovely. It'd be lovely to hear about what the, our group experience has been around this topic. 
or it might be completely new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David. Yeah, thanks. Uh, great question. I, I, I'm a member of quite a few communities of practice, whether it's within the city of Calgary, like the corporation or out in our in our uh, greater areas of in facilitation. Uh, so uh, I, I find them a great way to be able to uh, exchange and, and ask questions, uh, um, feel comfortable you have that comfortability of, of, of challenging and uh, being inquisitive there. So from the community of practice and, 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 and through Tamarack, uh, you know, I've probably been involved with some communities of learning. And lastly, you know, within uh, my, my kids group, I, I might be parts of communities of interest, you know, whether we're interested in hockey or baseball or golf or something so yeah that's awesome thanks david yes yeah tamarack has a lot that's a really great yeah so yeah it's, it's an interesting thing for us to think about as what is our experience been within these spaces and again thinking about as we're leading as we're engaging um the great how do we consider and think about moving from those space the great knowledge that's happening there to other spaces and so uh maybe he's going to share a little bit about our thoughts about that Yes, thank you. So uh, a couple ways that we wanted to talk about that were, were um, obviously the individual factors, but the role of the community member and the role of the facilitators. Um, so from the community member aspect, as Janelle had pointed out earlier, um, yes, it came from a call for the facilitator, but she had a passionate idea that was really specific that she'd already um, been learning about. So as uh, like, suggestion from that is to draw from personal um, or work experience. What are you already interested in learning about uh, or doing research? Um, and, and something that Janelle and I really realized when we were working together is this takes a certain level of vulnerability, um, especially if you're drawing from lived experiences. So just be aware of that and, and be uh, careful with yourself. Uh, and then the role of the facilitators, um, again, was to connect um, and, and bring people together. So when Joel um, and Templeton had been called on by Janelle, they were just thinking and they asked me. Um, and that was really supportive of, of me because I would never have asked to do something like this. Um, but it made me kind of come out of my shell and it's been really valuable um, as a networking opportunity and just to build relationships with the other people in this group. Um, for environmental factors of our community of practice, we're a pretty big uh, group and we're from all over Nova Scotia. We meet mostly online. Um, so something that we wanted to bring up is the feeling of making a safe space where people can be welcome. Um, so I think some important factors there are hearing things from different perspectives um, and sharing unique examples from lived experiences. This um, you know, opens up conversations and, and sharing um, where people can just feel more comfortable to, to articulate things that they're seeing in their daily lives um, to, to bring forth and, and maybe want to talk about more and, and have presentations just as we've done. Absolutely. So now we're going to go into kind of the meat of our presentation, which is the secret sauce. So the secret sauce is kind of our combination of things um, that we believe led to the success of this collaboration. Um, so the first thing is teamwork, evidently having clear roles and expectations for all team members um, is important so that people know what is expected. We're meeting deadlines and actually pushing um, the action forward. Um, also, um, if we flip to our next slide, you'll see that amongst the team, there's a lot of complementary skills that we have that work really well together and allow some people to take a step forward in some tasks and others to take on different tasks that align with their strengths. Um, so I'll just point out a few um, key things from our team. So Joel um, took on the role of coordinator and outreach. 
Um, so always seeking new opportunities and locations and places where we could share uh, our knowledge, uh, much like today. And uh, also assisting with tech support and Google Drive and all that kind of stuff. Um, as for myself, I took on the role of researcher. So I had the idea. Um, I researched lots of different um, templates for disclosing um, mental illness or disability to employers, uh, draw upon my own lived experience of disclosing in the workplace, and, and built on that. Um, also, one of my key skills is knowledge translation, so making that research and information really accessible uh, for folks and presenting it in a fun way, which I think is important when you're working with youth. Um, and then we have Templeton. So uh, Templeton is our motivator. Um, he brings an excellent energy to the group and during presentations as well, um, and is really good at picking up on what people are saying and looking for patterns and themes um, during actual presentations. So definitely need a Templeton on your team. Um, and then we have Maggie. So Maggie has a lot of experience as an employment support practitioner. Um, so we deemed them our policy specialist uh, because they know a lot about the regulations and rules in the workplace about disclosing when it comes to disability and mental illness. Um, and then also a wealth of client support experience to draw on for specific examples, which really, again, helps illustrate concepts um, when we release the workshop. So yeah, so when we're talking about um, fun and relationship, um, it's really good um, when engaging with um, just community, but also people in general, making sure that you have that um, welcoming um, spirit. Um, this helps with being more comfortable with um, building the team easily, um, being able to express easily with each other um, and feel comfortable just um, working along with each other is, is really good. And I would say Janelle, Joel and I, I feel like we we have fun. We, we have a lot of fun within this team um, and we bring a lot of jokes like this morning and bring a lot of laughter um, and we try to um, share the energy. And so um, I, I, I call it lightening it up a little bit, um, bringing that, um, that soft tune, but also being welcoming um, and understanding that you're all about community and you all want to grow together, um, which is really important, yeah. Something, something else I wanted to um, just validate is the, the idea of moving past just working together as professionals. Um, so once you've built that relationship, it, it gives you space to, um, to see each other as humans um, and, and validate and, and care and give space for what's needed, especially when you're talking about um, lived experience and sensitive subjects. Uh. The final part of our uh, secret sauce ingredients. So we've talked about kind of the individual pieces in terms of us working together well, the value, the fun, the, the empathetic care. And that's true. Like we had a call yesterday planning this and it was pretty close to the highlight of my day. Just being in like, we only talked together for 30 minutes, but being able to talk about this presentation and work together, it was, it was, it was very lovely and refreshing. Um, but in terms of organizationally, we thought it was important. Some of the things that's helped us be successful was uh, we had early wins so that initial presentation by Janelle and Maggie within the C community of learning was received very well and so that was an early win and I think it gave them confidence um, and so like yeah this is actually something that people have an appetite for. Um, we also saw a strong alignment between ourselves personally and how we approach the work, how we approach um, supporting one another, engaging with one another, but we also had strong support from our differing organizations. So we represent three different organizations with three different mandates but we had a strong alignment between the three and our bosses and our manager said, yes, you are good to go and move forward with this. And so we were able to put our branding on all these people, pieces and share them within our networks, which again, I think helped further the knowledge mobilization, knowledge translation occur across Nova Scotia, where we were able to engage with over 60 employers and 60 individuals outside of the previous 40 that had already heard the content. So it was, it was close to 200 people who saw and heard the presentation that Megan Janelle developed. Um, and it all started from Janelle sending an email saying, hey, this is what, an idea I had.
Can I jump in here um, just for a quick second? I see uh, David popped a really good question in the chat there. So how do you invite people to shift between different types of roles? Um, do any of you um, feel like you want to take on that question? I, ha I have one, one point I just wanted to make is the flexibility piece. So I think going back to what Maggie was saying about validation and care for one another, there were many times when we were working together when some of us were sick. Um, so we couldn't make a meeting and someone else had to take something on. Um, and because we were so passionate and invested in the project, I feel like there were no hard feelings or egos involved with that. It was just, we all cared so much about the project that we were able to step in when needed because of that relationship. Anyone I think else wanna the, add? I, yeah, and I think that's important when selecting the team. Like you, you have to um, bring on passionate individuals that they're not ex they're being open um, to to help in any area, um, or they're willing to learn um, that area, um, which is really important. And I, I think that that's what all of us do um, in in this space is like we learn, and if we don't know it, we we ask questions. Um, in order for us to move forward with that. So, yeah. We we are people that work with youth, so I don't want to undervalue uh, the idea of inviting, right? So just like even the simple act of inviting and giving um, space to step up um, is also really important, I think, yeah. when you're, you're trying to create a safe space. Yeah, and, and just to build up, and, and, you, and we have the question that's actually really connected to your question, David, so that's great. But I think one thing, like we're as a community of practice, like Templeton and I as facilitators, again, it's a community owned um, group, but like we're trying to, we, we facilitate it. Um, we are continuing to try and invite more and more people in. And so like, it, we'll be completely honest, like this is an example of a success story. <laughs> um, like we've been functioning for over a year and while we've had various um, different folks uh, share and contribute in this space, um, this was an example of when it something really clicked. And so I think that there is something to be said about like that continuing that invitation piece. But like what we are trying to do, and it kind of reflects to this question of like ensuring safety is um, and creating a safe space is like, I think a certain level of vulnerability as facilitators saying like, and creating the tone from the very beginning and kind of uh, mm, use the term guarding the space a little bit. Uh, we. Uh, we're working with someone to come in and do a presentation at the community of practice, but um, Templeton and I are being very intentional about this is the type of space we want it to be, and it is. And so I think there's a sense of on the facilitator side, it's continuing to ensure to foster a safe space by being responsive and being really engaged with um, community members who are part of it. So like I'm regularly emailing with people um, uh, within the community and this is like off the side of my desk. Like this isn't my only, this isn't my full-time job. This is something that's part of my role. But I think that's a big space as well as we're trying to do some innovative pieces with um, inviting people in to say, what, what type of engagement do you wanna have? And then what level of engagement do you wanna have with that? So do you wanna participate? And we have a variety of different projects and trying to develop some working groups, but then also asking the question kind of like IEP2, if that's if some, some folks are familiar with that, like what level of engagement do you want to have with that? Do you want to, can you attend meetings regularly? No. Can you read documents and send an email? Yes. Or are you willing to lead? So like, like and allowing and creating spaces to have people engage in different ways with a different project is something that we're trying, but uh, that response took a little bit longer. Sorry. No, it's good. I think that's, that's really good, Joel. It's always good to, to, to develop and bring it more. Um, into perspective. Um, when thinking about the, the COP um, from a facilitator perspective, I, I, there, there's a question I think that is really good for you all to reflect on. You can respond um, if you like, um, but how can you create um, where, how can you create space where people feel safe and, and free to bring forward passion, knowledge and sharing project. And I, I would say when thinking about this question, you have to be very open minded and, and knowing that you have different cultural perspectives in the room and, and there's a lot of different patterns and different um, 
format of work and, and, and style of work is in the room. And so bring, bringing, allowing the creativity to flow. Um, and Joel and I, we work together so well. It's like sometimes like when it comes down to us as facilitators, like he's more of like the the, the typer and, 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 and bringing um, everything all in one. And that I'm more of like just throwing out ideas and, and, and trying to um, innovate, but we're both collaborative and so if you have like that collaborative um, mindset is really important um, to do that because it brings a whole bigger bigger perspective but also not leaving um, questions um, um, unanswered is, is really important as a, as a facilitator I think Joel and I we we, we think about those questions we see those questions that that um, that community members are bringing to the community of practice and we say hey It'll be really good if we add that to the table or to the question um, to our next community of practice um, or we add that into a webinar series or it, it, that's how it, it builds um, to a to another level and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet for now, but I, I see Trina um, I'm wanting to say something, so I'll, I'll give the mic over to you. Yeah. Um, I work in the field of developmental disabilities and have had for many years um, and supporting people in community. Um, so I've had the experience where we've gone to try and join a class at a local community center um, and we were not received very well. Um, and it led to uh, people not feeling comfortable to go back. Um, and then being able to talk to the community center to try and problem solve around um, some of the barriers that we had and the way we were perceived by people. Moving forward a couple of years, we decide to go back to a different community center. Um, we're involved in an aqua class. Um, I had five people, I was the facilitator, but I tried to stay away from the people that I was supporting. Um, so they were didn't have that staff perspective with them all the time. Um, and it was really interesting because a lot of the people in that class were retired teachers and they were coming to me and asking questions. And so being able to have that honest opinion and approach at a relative time, like me, you don't want to have that full discussion while you're working out at the pool, but it's like, okay, well, let me introduce you to Michael and you can ask Michael. Uh, questions. Um, so over the time piece, uh, they, people started reacting to each other in appropriate ways. Hi, how are you? How was your weekend? Those kinds of things. And then a lady in the group, um, her husband passed away and she was gone for some time. And then the group noticed and they wanted to write her a card. So they wrote her a card, which led to, um, at that time, uh, it was a day program that we had, but we had a cafe. So they gave her a gift card to come to the cafe. And so then she called me and reached out and said, I wanna come for coffee, but I wanna make sure everybody's there. Can you do that for me? And I was like, absolutely. So right there, we, we had a bad experience we took some time away, we came back, but we had a positive experience. And I think being willing to have at the appropriate time, an honest conversation about what your fears are in coming together for a collaboration, I think is really important. And just sit there and be honest. And especially as we talk about multiculturalism and those things, where, like tell me about where you're coming from, what's it like, how can we blend this together? Well said. That's that. Well said, um, you know, for sure. That uh, that's really so important. Thank you so much for sharing that, Janelle. I'll I'll, I'll lead, let you lead the way in the second question. And if you have Great. any responses to um, the first question, you are more than happy to place it in the chat box. Yeah, for sure. So, in the interest of time, um, question number two of the questions number two will be a to-go question. So we want you to leave uh, maybe thinking about someone that you can reach out to. So can you think of someone to reach out to who would help support you engage in some sort of project that you have in mind um, to extend beyond the community of learning that you are a part of? So we will leave you with that question. And then I think uh, Joel has a couple additional questions there, if you feel so inclined. 
I, th I think uh, we just wanted to say thank you and we'll leave you some more questions, of course, but these are, uh, you know, reflective questions. What are your strengths? What, are, what, are, what role could you take on to mobilize learnings from a community practice or community of learning? Um, and, and think of them as, as you think of the, the other two questions, which I think Joel has listed in our, our chat too. So um, yeah. Thanks everyone for coming today. Are there any lingering questions or comments that folks have? 